chapter 4, Mishnah 7. The Mishnah continues its discussion of how an animal shechita affects what is inside her womb. Our Mishnah deals with the amniotic sac, which contains the developing fetus. If someone slaughters an animal and finds an amniotic sac inside it, the one who is not squeamish may eat it, since it became permitted with the shechita of the animal in which it is found. The Mishnah continues with other laws regarding the animal's amniotic sac. But although it is permitted to eat the amniotic sac, since most people would not eat it, it does not become tame, neither with the tumma of foods if the mother was slaughtered, nor with the tumma of nevelas if the mother died without being slaughtered. However, as soon as someone has intent to eat it, the, the person's intent makes the amniotic sac into a food, and it can then contact the tumma of foods. But such intent would not give it the tuma of nevelas, because intent to eat something makes it into food, not into meat. The mission now cites a case in which the sac may not be eaten. If part of an amniotic sac with no fetus visible inside it came out of the womb before the mother was slaughtered, the sac is forbidden for eating, eating even the part of the sac that remained inside. This is because an amniotic sac is the sign of a fetus in a woman and the sign of a fetus in an animal. That is, even if we do not see any fetus in the sac, we assume that it contained a dissolved fetus. Thus, we are concerned that the small part of the sac that came out contained the fetus's dissolved head, in which case the entire fetus and sac is considered to have been born and does not become permitted with the slaughter of the mother. The Mishnah teaches other laws that apply to an amniotic sac that contains a dissolved fetus. If an animal was pregnant with its firstborn aborted in an amniotic sac, one may throw it to the dogs, even though it is possible that the dissolved fetus in the sack is a bachor, which would be forbidden for benefit. The reason one may benefit from it is that, in the majority of cases, it is not sacred. Therefore, we follow the majority of cases in which benefit is permitted. But in the case of sanctified animals, such as a female shalamim, that aborted an amniotic sack, it is forbidden for benefit and must be buried, because in a majority of cases it does have sanctity but it or any other amniotic sac may not be buried at the crossroads, nor may it be hung on a tree, because these are the superstitious ways of the Amorites, who believe that bearing an aborted fetus at the crossroads or hanging it from a tree protects the mother from future miscarriages. And the Torah prohibits Jews from copying the way of the Amorites.